What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like the video if you appreciate the content that Poe Rowe and What's the Numbers I provided. Today, we'll be back with a profile piece. This one is on King Blood. In this video, we're going to take a look at his early life in Cuba before coming to the United States and landing in Chicago, where he become a member of the Latin Kings. Then, we will speak about his move to New York and the time he spent in the New York State prison system where he will start his own chapter of the Latin Kings. And lastly, we will take a look at the details surrounding the case that currently has King Blood serving a life sentence in solitary confinement with no human contact for over 20 years now. Louis Philippe, better known as King Blood, is from Havana, Cuba. Raised by his mother and never meeting his father, King Blood in 1979 would shoot a man in the arm and get arrested for attempted murder and sentenced to 10 years in a Cuban prison. By the next year, 1980, Cuba was overtaken by lawlessness and desperation. That's when former Prime Minister of Cuba, Fidel Castro, opened his prison cells and freed the undesirables in the Mariel Boatlift. King Blood at the young age of 19 will be one of the lucky ones released from prison and sent to the United States for a chance at a new life. He would eventually settle in Chicago and while there become a member of the almighty Latin King and Queen Nation, which is one of the largest Hispanic and Latino street and prison gangs worldwide. King Blood rose through the ranks and in no time was the president of the Brahmar and Winthrop chapter of Latin Kings, which is on the north side of the city of Chicago. In 1981, King Blood moved to the South Bronx and while drunk, he shot and killed his girlfriend. He was arrested for the crime and sentenced to nine years for second degree manslaughter. In 1986, while serving time in the Collins Correctional Facility, King Blood founded the Bloodline chapter of the Latin Kings in New York State Prison. After two months, there were over 60 members of the Latin Kings including four bodyguards for the first crown, King Blood. Allegedly, the first action planned by King Blood and the Latin Kings was a quick, brutal, and successful war with the Muslims. In 1989, King Blood was paroled but then returned back to prison for possession of stolen property. Back in Collins before being transferred to Attica, prison officials would little by little find out more information on this new prison gang that hit the streets of New York and was spreading like wildfire in the Latin community. The authorities would start to focus on King Blood as he was deemed the leader of the organization. They would request a mail watch on any letters coming to or leaving from King Blood while incarcerated in Collins and Attica state prisons. Eventually the mail watch paid off for authorities because the letters and correspondence intercepted by DOC officials established King Blood's plans to murder and contain directives to carry out the homicides of six individuals. On June 21, 1994, King Blood was arrested on charges of racketeering that included murder, attempted murder, and conspiracy to commit murder. He was later indicted on 18 counts for his participation in seven racketeering acts. After a five-week trial in November of 1996, King Blood was convicted on all counts against him and in February of 1997 was sentenced to life imprisonment. In addition, the district court imposed special conditions of confinement on King Blood, requiring that he be confined in special housing, i.e. solitary confinement, without contact with other prisoners and prohibited from communicating with any co-defendants or any member of the Latin Kings or Queens. Also, he can't correspond or receive visits from anyone except his attorney and close family members approved by the district court. And lastly, King Blood is prohibited from telephone contact with anyone, later modified to permit King Blood to make calls only to his attorney. According to the judge in the case, the reasoning behind such a sentence was because King Blood while in prison had used his privileges to correspond with people outside the prison in order to maintain control over the criminal activities of the Latin Kings and cause the murders of a number of people. Because there was every reason to believe King Blood will abuse those privileges again and attempt to orchestrate additional murders, the judge determined that his human contact needed to be severely restricted. And that's where King Blood has been ever since. It's been over 20 years since the judge gave him that sentence. How's at ADX Supermax, King Blood is still isolated from everybody but his lawyer as he doesn't have any close family members that live in the United States. Currently at the age of 60 years old, we are still waiting to see if one day he will be released from segregation and put into general population. Joe, it's What's the Numbers TV is a quick profile piece on Louis Philippe, better known as King Blood. Now, he was an original Latin King member from Chicago, came to New York, started his own chapter in New York. Now, at the time they say he was a leader from around 1986 to 96. Those were some of the highest years, you know, the, 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 the strongest years for the Latin Kings. You know, in the 90s, probably the early 2000s, they had the whole war with the Bloods and they started, you know, decreasing their numbers and losing their power as well, their, their stronghold on this, the prison, New York State prison system. But when King Blood was the leader, they was, you know, they was the thing. They was the strongest thing moving because he was more violent. 
you know, after King Blood, King Tone came, and he had like a different agenda for the organization. You know, he wanted to do more community outreach, more positive things within the community and within his organization. But King Blood, King Blood was started in prison, so he was looking at it from a prison gang's aspect, like not letting nothing slide. You know. Um, making displays of violence and you know if you were a gang member you were up and coming gang member you want to either be with the strongest gang the most violent gang or you want to be with the gang gang the most money it's really that people join gangs because they want to be with the cool gang the, 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 the bunch of cool guys or the guys that you know they look at like like, like they look at like a, a weak gang you know what i'm saying usually that's just because you're in that neighborhood and you're forced into that gang really when you're in a gang you're trying to be with the biggest strongest gang you know so the gang getting the most amount of money so that's so they draw into that, and when King Blood was the leader of Land Kings, they was real violent, putting in a lot of work, you know, leading by example as far as on the displaying the violence, and that drawn a lot of members to them. Now, eventually he got, you know, he got locked up, got sent away. King Tone took over, and the the, the 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 organization went in a different direction. But King Blood, like I said, he was killing own members, members that he felt was a a threat to his his power. He was getting them killed, you know, what I'm saying doing things like that. Now, the Land Kings are definitely still here in New York City. They're out of state. I see. I was just in Florida. I seen some Land Kings out there, flagged up, beads, everything. But they're not as strong as they once were. Now, you go to the Puerto Rican Parade or something like that in New York City, of course you're going to see them. But as far as like them just being everywhere in certain pocket, pockets of neighborhoods, they're not there as much as they were. You know, a lot of people don't turn blood, crip, poverty, got different gangs, you know what I'm saying? So the Land Kings ain't as strong as they once were, but they are still around. But like I said, man, it's just a quick profile piece on King Blood, a.k.a. Louis Philippe, because a lot of people were saying that, you know, I did a lot of blood leaders, and it's not just that, it's just that a lot of people had, they, they, there was a big topics on the internet, so I was touching on that. But definitely shout out to the Latin Kings, you know what I'm saying, this piece is on, on King Blood, Louis Philippe, one of the most tori notorious Latin King leaders of all time, He's still locked up in so solitary confinement with no human contact, so, you know what I'm saying, hopefully he gets out of that, gets to, you know, somehow get reacclimated to being around people or general population like that because he probably won't never see the light of day again but like i said it's a quick profile piece on king blood make sure you subscribe to the channel we have 44,000. go follow the instagram the patreons up there the merch the membership all that good stuff and we'll be back before you know it also go check out the artist of the week dope is q the what's the numbers tv artist of the week go check him out at our dmv area and in the next video we'll have another snippet of some of his music so you guys can check out but like i said man what's the numbers tv it's your boy poro we out of here peace